The Association of Certified Fraud Examiners has released a report on fraud in 125 countries from across the world. The report titled Report to the Nations focuses on how fraud occurs, how it's reported and dealt with, as well as how companies can proactively protect themselves against fraud. The report examines over 2,600 cases of occupational fraud that were investigated between January 2016 and October 2017. Let's take a look at some of those key findings. The most uh, reported instances of fraud cases were in Southern Asia with 62% and the least in the United States. Sub-Saharan Africa has 49% of reported fraud cases. 82% of men rather are found to commit fraud in organizational fraud with 18% of women committing those fraud. Let's take a look at some of the other key findings. Whistleblowing accounted for 50% of overall detection in corruption cases. Indicators of corruption or red flags that companies could look out for include people living beyond their means, a very close relationship with suppliers, financial difficulties, and a cavalier wheeler dealer attitude. The top three methods of hiding corruption according to that report are creating fraudulent physical documents, altering physical documents and creating fraudulent transactions in the accounting system. Fraud can last up to 30 months in uh, payroll fraud without being detected and about 12 months in instances of cash in hand. Only 2% of fraud was initially detected by law enforcement officials. 42% of initial detection came from tip-offs and whistleblowers. And about 7% was discovered by mistake. Contributing factors um, to fraud include lack of internal controls, lack of management reviews, and poor tone or leadership at the top. Who's responsible for organizational fraud? Employees account for about 44% and owners only 19%. However, owners have the ability to cause loss 17 times larger than the median loss caused by low-level employees. The most common schemes of corruption in sub-Saharan Africa are corruption at 49%, cash in hand at 21%, and non-cash at 18%. Now, for more on this report, I'm joined from our Pretoria studios by Yako de Yara. He's the CEO of the South African chapter of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Now, this report says sub-Saharan Africa has 49% of corruption cases. Can you break down what that actually means for us? Well, when we look at corruption, uh, it's a subcategory of fraud. Um, so... There's, there's 52 different schemes that we talk to when dealing with fraud and corruption is, is a small portion of that. Although small, it makes out in, in Africa or Southern Africa 49% of all the fraud that is committed, uh, which is quite high, um, as you can quite see. The, the, the concern that we've got is who commits this? Um, is it in the private sector or the public sector? A lot of people say it's in the public sector who's actually driving this whole initiative or this whole um, tender frauds um, and other types of frauds that, that links to corruption. But who pays this? So we always say it's, it takes two to tango and um, both public and private sector is equal in, in being involved in this whole corrupt activities. Yoko, we've seen that only 2% of initial detection of fraud comes from law enforcement officials and about 40% is initially detected by whistleblowers and people who give tip-offs. In South Africa, what kind of a culture do we have around protecting these people um, and what kind of a culture do we have around whistleblowers? Well, one need to remember that the, the law enforcement's main objective is there to, to look at cases that's been reported to them. So they don't sit within companies and protecting companies proactively, they're reactive. It's the obligation of companies to appoint the right uh, type of person, your professional, to prevent and detect fraud from occurring and, and also prevent losses from occurring uh, to the company as well as to the investors. That say, uh, or said, there is a whistleblow act or the, um, or the Protected Disclosure Act that, that we've got in South Africa and there's similar legislation all over Africa 
that actually protects the whistleblower um, in, in that when they blow the whistle or go through a hotline system, their identity should be kept in, uh, confidential if the request is there. This is not, uh, doesn't always happen. Um, if it doesn't happen, then they've got certain rights and, uh, and, and certain legal steps that they can go uh, and take against the company or the person uh, that released the information. If a company wants to be proactive at either stopping fraud that has occurred or trying to stop it um, before it happens, what are the other red flags that they can look out for besides perhaps someone who's spending beyond their means or someone who's got a very close relationship with suppliers? Remember, this, it, it depends all on the type of business that we deal with. Um, so it will, it will vary. Um, you can have a look at, at red flags when, when looking at employees, such as a person refusing to be promoted because they're earning more where they're currently sitting than what they would earn where they are now being promoted to. A person that refuses to take leave, for instance. Um, they usually don't want to be away from work because other people will be in that same position then and will see what they've been doing. So there, there's different red flags that's available. What you need to do is you need to have certain controls in place to prevent people from, from, uh, from committing fraud or corruption, um, such as uh, training and awareness programs, um, assist, uh, employee assistance programs. You need to have random audits uh, in place have uh, things like a, a proper um, policy that deals with fraud so, and, and people need to know about this um, a policy that that looks at the contact of, of of staff internally what is the tone at the top uh, do the do the staff know about this do you have internal and external auditors is your external auditors um, clued up um, knowing what the business is all about and what to look for so these type of things, management overview, um, is, is very important and, and there's, there's various things that you can implement to protect your organization, all highlighted in the report to the nation that, which you referred to and which they can go and download from our website. Mm. Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, CEO of the South African chapter, Yako Diaha, thanks so much for your time on SABC News.